Hello again. Let's take a look at dynamic coding in Python. Lab 290. Dynamic coding is about making code that makes code on the fly. I have seen students tell me that it's important when you're testing hardware, perhaps. Some shops go to Python because it does have this dynamic coding facility. I have to warn you that once you go to dynamic coding, readability goes out the window. It's very difficult to read and to debug, but sometimes it's what you really need. There are four facilities that are involved with dynamic coding. Actually, two groups of two facilities. One is exec and eval, execute and evaluate. Exec, you give it a string and it will execute that string as if it was code right there in that namespace. Eval, you have a string and you feed it to eval and it looks for the identifier that matches that string. So we have a assigning and a referencing call. So we'll look first at those two, and then we will look at set adder and get adder. Now people complain about exec and eval. They are, well, particularly exec, it is dangerous. I don't really understand what is so dangerous about it. I, when I ask, I'm told, well, you don't want to exec something that you take off the internet. So it seems to me like the internet is dangerous, but it does execute things. So you have to be really careful about what you're executing. Okay, let's look at the exec and the eval, and then we'll look at the set at or get at or version, which are better. Not necessarily because they're less dangerous, although it's up to you, but because they have tighter control over your code. And it's always better to have tighter control. Alrighty, first we'll look at dynamic.py. You'll see that I am calling it down here, and I'm giving two command line arguments, name and money in pocket. So the idea is that when I call it, I can give it some strings here, and they're going to become attributes in my code or identifiers. If I give some arguments on my command line, my attributes are those arguments. So we have name and money in pocket. If I don't, then I will be using the defaulted or the constant attributes that I have up here at the top. Doesn't matter. You want to realize that when I call get attributes of attributes, what comes in here are strings. And the idea of dynamic coding is that it slides around between strings and identifiers. So for each of these strings, I'm going to ask my user, name please, money in pocket please, and each time I'm going to make a string. Here I'm saying that name equals Linda, but I have Linda in another delimitation of string. So the exact call is going to strip off the stringness here and then execute the rest in this space. But I don't want it to do it in this function space. I want it to do it in my globals so that it's sitting out there so that my print attributes will be able to find it. If it's here in this function space, then it would disappear when the function was done. So here we have Linda as our name and our money in pocket as a dollar and a quarter as a string. Okay, and then I'm going to come around again and I'm going to print the same attributes. And I'll find them in the global space. And because I'm only evaluating them or referencing them, I don't have to say in here global attributes or global anything. 
I can now say for each in attributes, again, that's the string, and I'm going to evaluate each string, and then I'm going to print it out as each string that was a string becomes an attribute, and I'm reporting them. So that's how we got that. I did it another time, and I did it accepting the defaults of just name, zip, phone, and social security number. Very invasive. Okay, now we'll look at dynamic two. This is exactly the same code, except instead of using exec and eval, I use the two built-in functions, set adder and get adder. Let's take a look. The only thing we have that's different is line 17, set adder. Set adder requires three arguments. The first one is the object into which you want to set the attribute. We'll look at that a little more carefully in just a moment. And then the second one is a string, and that will become an identifier in the object. And then the answer is whatever it is, and that becomes what is set to the, that identifier in that object. Okay. The big problem is if I want to put name equals Nancy at the global space, what is that object that is a global space? Here's how you get that. The sys library once again comes through with something very powerful for us. And it is a dictionary of all the modules that are in your application. The keys into that dictionary are the magic names. So one will be magic main, and every other one will be the import name. This one, because we're running it, is magic main, but it resolves to the value which is the object, the module object. So into the module object, that space, I am putting my identifiers and their values. Here they're strings, but then they become identifiers. When I come around to print attributes, I go around for each of them, and this time I'm calling get adder. I give it the same module object and a string, and it reports to me the value that the identifier has. Okay, that's it. We're going to look at one more in case you do this exercise. We're going to look at our soccer team.py. I'm hoping that it's a little more realistic. It's kind of difficult to come up with a small example that's realistic. So let's look down here. We are going to be looking at the bees file. You have it, a file called bees, and the bees is a soccer team. And the data file looks like this. It says forwards and it has a colon. Then it has a bunch of forwards and then midfielders and a colon. Like that. And then the people, the players, have their shirt number and then their name. So we will be parsing that. And it's nice to get a nice example of parsing as well. This particular program is going to have double duty because we'll do it again object-oriented and we'll see that it's much nicer. We'll start by looking at main. And here I see the team name is bees. Well, that's the name of the file. So I'll open it, call it file object. And I'm passing that file object into my function process team. It's going to pass back to me the team name. Now, I don't know why I did that. Bees, we already know that. And the position strings. So the position strings will be a list that says forwards, defenders, midfielders, and goalies. We'll see. Here comes that stream in. So it is a file object open for reading, but it could come from somewhere else. So I like the word stream. Here I am starting my empty list of position strings, and I'm going to pass that back. For each line in my stream, I'm going to strip it. That means all the white space is coming off by default. If there's nothing left, I move on 
and get the next line. If it ends with a colon, that means we have a position. So I am stripping off of the last thing, which is the colon, remembering that I'd already stripped off all the white space. And I'm going to execute that position equals the empty list. So I put that list out here in my globals with that call to the globals built-in function. It's a function. you got to call it. And then I'm adding that string that is the forwards into my list of position strings. Okay, and then I continue. So if I ever get down here, I have a player. The player then, here I have him, I'm going to split him on the white space just one time because I don't want to split up his name. I only want to split the shirt number from the name. So I am going to put into my position plus equals details. Realize that details is a list. And so here is a list in a list. This outer one is the position list itself. And then the, we'll have a list for each of our players that is his shirt number and his name. Now then, I am going to execute that, which means the string notation goes off and this is executed. Interesting is that I did not have to say global so the position because it's out here and also I am able to do an assignment into it. Okay, and then I'm going to say yay, details one, that's the name. Number, that's the number, details zero, notify position. So notify position is going to be the string notify forwards and I'm calling it in my exec call, and that's what happened. I'm calling notify forwards, here it is. It just says, go for the goal. So here is the dynamic part, is that we respond dynamically to what kind of a player coming in here. What is unpleasant for my Python eyeball is details one and details zero, and I have to remember that this is the number and this is player's name. And when we're in object-oriented programming, everything has names. It's so much easier to keep track of. I'm going to call print team. Here comes the B's name and again. Position strings. So you remember that position strings, that position strings was returned by my process team and then it came in again in my call to print team. So here is a list of the strings. I'm given the team name, beats, and for each of my for each in my position strings, like forwards, I print it out and put a colon. And then I am going to evaluate each. Now each is forwards. Well, forwards is a list in the global space, so there's no problem evaluating it. So here I have a list of details for each of my players, a list of lists, each list being the details for each of my players. I'm sorting them up and they'll get sorted by the first piece of it, which is the number, and that's what we have, and I like that. So I'm going to print out and give a little space and then a colon, join of the player. Now the player is a list, and so we'll get number, colon, space, and then the name. In the output, you see that there'll be the output from process team and then printing. We looked at both of those, and then we're going to open up once again the original B's file and read it and write it out to standard out. I just did this to remind you that sys has that standard out. So this is from process team, where we say yay each member of our team and we give him the appropriate encouragement. And here is the bees that came from print team.
nicely formatted. And once again, we see the original data file. Okay, your job is to rewrite that soccer team program so that instead of having an executive val, you have set adder and get adder. Now, I will warn you that that is hard. It's as hard as it can be. I gave you the worst possible situation. So work on it a little bit, but don't spend too much time because I'll show you the answer. And then you'll know for forever. Okay.